and I refer to the uh, ancient cultures in Mexico and the importance of Tlaloc, I mean it was a huge territory. And uh, so, uh, Tlaloc, uh, as you can see, he has Google, uh, Google eyes and he has very long teeth and features that represent jaguar, as jaguar was the uh, precious and also worshipped animal. In Aztec iconology, Tlaloc is usually depicted with Google eyes, as I mentioned, and fangs. He is most often coupled with lightning, with maize, which is the, uh, the element and the most important food in Mexico, in Mesoamerica. Uh, he, you are always going to see him with jaguar fishes, as I mentioned before. And this differs a little from the Mayan version of uh, Tlaloc. Tlaloc for the Mayan is Chac. Uh, but when we refer to the Mayan god of rain, he doesn't have this uh, jaguar picture. So here you can see a picture of Chac uh, for the Mayan and Tlaloc for the Aztec. You are going to find Tlaloc uh, always associated with thunder. Sometimes you are going to see him holding um, lightning. You are going to see him associated with maize, as I mentioned before, and also with ceramics. Uh, ceramics in Mexico date back a thousand years before the pre-Columbian period. So it was very, very important as they were the containers of water, and water, especially virgin water. For the Mayans, uh, here you can see some uh, images of ceramics, and as you can see, they are very elaborated, especially with painting. Not uh, as much elaborated with uh, ceramic by its own, but painting. Because uh, the language, the written language for these people was only for the high classes and the and priests and the royalty. But what they used the most was um, the pictographs. So they, in every piece, maybe you can see a story. They're telling a story. Sometimes you can see different vases, and each vase is going to be like a book. One, page one, page two, page three, but in this kind of ceramics. Also, this kind of ceramics was used to be offered to the gods. Many pieces were found in uh, the Mayan cenotes. Here we are going to get into what is the sacred waters of the Mayas. Cenotes are mainly found in the peninsula of Yucatan, which is right there. And due to the uh, geography of this place, we don't have rivers, we don't have lakes, so the sacred water of the Mayas was underneath. Uh, I am going to describe what a cenote is. A cenote are surface connections to groundwater bodies. The best known cenotes are large open uh, uh, water. The greatest number of cenotes are smaller sheltered one sites and do not necessarily have surface exposed. There, there are more than 3,000 cenotes in Yucatan. Can we go to the... Uh, this is an open water cenote. If you see it from uh, the outside, you would find like a, you know, a small lake or a small pond. But this is connected to underwater. So, can we see this? And this is a sinkhole, cenote, a sinkhole. And this is what makes it so, so interesting. You see, a cenote is, uh, the water has filtered rainwater for many, many years, and then you have these sinkholes as the ground collapses, and then they get, uh, I don't know how I would say it right now because I don't want to read, it's boring if I read. So these are water connections, let's say underwater river, rivers, they're all connected, and some of them go to the sea. So when you get the water, these underwater rivers, Close to the sea, the water is going to be a little salty. But as you go deep into inland, it's virgin water, very sweet, and that was the drinking water of the Mayan. So for this reason, can we see the, oh, wait, 
this is very interesting because you can see the sink hole and then the, wa the light going into the cenote. And the water, as the uh, peninsula is in the Caribbean, the water is very, very blue. Okay, Mayas associated, uh, there were two very important things for them. One was the mountain, the other one was water. So usually when you go to a place in the Mayan Peninsula, you are going to associate, they associated uh, the mountains with the pyramids. So the pyramids represented mountains and usually the temples were gl close to a cenote, whether it was an open cenote or a sinkhole. Many offerings have been found in cenotes and that proves that the Mayan worship Tlaloc in these places. Offerings, offerings. Usually they, uh, you would find there lots of ceramics, jade, gold pieces, and sometimes even textiles were offered. Here are some pieces of ceramics. This is a very interesting uh, piece because it, it's a uh, Tlaloc with Google eyes, the fang, and it's a water container. And this is what I was telling you about. It was also found in one of these uh, offerings in a cenote. It's telling a story. So it, it is like a book, as I mentioned, but you don't go page through page. It's not a paper that you unroll but it's a story being told in uh, ceramics. I think this is something that uh, is very characteristic of the region. Another thing that I would like to mention about these pieces is that they are very tall and they were used uh, to drink chocolate because chocolate, cacao, was used as money in Mesoamerica, especially in uh, warm weather where uh, cacao was very precious and instead of using coins, they would use cacao as money. And the interesting thing about uh, these pieces and the reason for being so tall is that chocolate in ancient Mexico was not uh, drunk uh, with water, as milk chocolate. They drank it with a little bit of uh, chili, I think Indians would like it, and water, and uh, they foam it with uh, a stick and roots tied to the bottom. So you go like this and then it, uh, the foam really goes up. So this was a very precious gift for the gods. No, it was cold, hot or cold. You can still drink it, but not so much. Okay, right now I would like to mention that, uh, as you know, uh, we have uh, been, uh, way, uh, I, I wouldn't like to say Western because we are on the Western side, but we were conquered by Europeans. So the Spaniard culture has uh, overlapped the ancient cultures of Mexico. I don't know if overlap would be the proper word, but you know, it's smothered. It's smothered. It, it doesn't sound that nice, but... <laughs> okay. okay. But uh, what you find in Mexico nowadays, and it's very interesting, is that even though they try, you know, to uh, make the Mexican Mayas, uh, Aztecs, and all the ancient Mexicans turn them into Catholicism, when they built uh, the churches, they use their hands to make those churches. And it's so amazing, in some old uh, churches, you are going to find pieces or maybe an image of Tlaloc. That is the most, it's difficult to find them. You have to be very careful. And many uh, scholars are looking for this because ancient uh, Mexicans put these little pieces of their gods in the Catholic churches. And in uh, the peninsula in Mexico, the Mayas still conduct some rites, uh, offerings, 
and things like this, but close to the public because they are very close. They still ha uh, have their language and their way of being. And it has been very difficult to incorporate them into uh, 21st century living. But the important thing is to keep their way of being. So the government is not pushing real hard on this because it's respect towards their uh, way, ancient way of being and they should also be proud. So what the government is doing now is uh, trying to teach uh, the Mayas both languages. So when children go to school, they are taught Spanish and their native language because it is important to have all this, not to lose all these ancient things. Well, uh, uh, Chuck is also, even now, 